Hello everyone. Uh, today's class we are going to see about yar ways. So this class will be a little bit longer than the usual classes, but I will try to make it as short as possible. But uh, uh, there has been many picture questions in the previous year, need PG examinations as well as uh, AIMS examinations. So uh, just pay attention, you might get some MCQs from this class. Okay, so first let's see what's the definition of airway. So airway is a device which when inserted either into the oropharynx or nasopharynx helps maintain, maintain the patency of the air passage for unobstructed breathing. So the definition is quite simple, right? So um, we insert either into the mouth or into the nasal cavity to keep the air passage open. Air passage in the sense upper airway that is your oropharynx, nasal, nasopharynx and laryngopharynx into your trachea. So airway is a device which we insert in the uh, pharyngeal, which we, which we insert to the pharynx, not deeper than that. So it is a supraglottic uh, device. Um, so I am pretty sure that uh, some of you might not have understood the definition. So let's go a little bit deeper. So what is the purpose of the airway? So we already know that the, the fundamental responsibility of the anesthetist is to provide the proper uh, gas exchange so that we have to keep the air passage open at all times so under anesthesia the muscles of the floor of the mouth and pharynx supporting the tongue relax and the uh, tongue and epiglottis fall into the posterior pharynx occluding the airway so you might not understand what i'm saying from this definition you just read the red uh, red uh, paragraph so i'll show an example so we will come back to this slide later See, under anesthesia, what happens? So this is the tongue of the patient. So normally when we when we sleep or when we uh, normally lie down, uh, the pharyngeal muscles will have a tone. Uh, that is, uh, they, they, they will have a tone and they will contract and relax whenever you want to breathe or breathe out. So under anesthesia, this tone will be lost. So what will happen is the, 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 the tongue and the pharyngeal structures which are kept away from the pharynx, it will fall back on the pharynx and it will obstruct the air passage. So the air cannot pass either through the mouth or through the nose. So there will be an obstruction. So what happens is we have to relieve this obstruction. So to relieve this obstruction, we have, we have uh, certain things in our hand. One is the airway opening maneuvers, another one is the airway devices. So um, we'll see first what are the airway opening maneuvers. So this is a blocked airway. So tongue is blocking the airway. So this is the trachea and this is the epiglottis. The air cannot pass into the into the uh, lungs. Here we are doing an airway opening maneuver, which is called as head tilt and chin lift. So this is one airway opening maneuver. We'll see a little bit more deeper. So blocked airway and uh, this is the airway insertion. We'll come back to this slide later. So head tilt and chin lift. So here you can see. We are uh, tilting the head and we are lifting the chin. So this is called as head tilt and chin lift. It is nothing but extension of the head. So here you can see the lady who is lying down uh, supine. Uh, let's assume she is anesthetized. Uh, she is an anesthetized patient. And uh, here the airway opening maneuver is performed. That is head tilt and chin lift. So this uh, causes flexion of the neck. So there is a problem here. So most of the patients who come to the emergency department after a road traffic accident are uh, some other uh, trauma so they might have a hidden cervical injury cervical uh, vertebra fracture so you have to the you have to put the patient on a cervical collar to prevent any further more damage to the cervical vertebra so in these patients you, uh, when they are unconscious you can you can uh, do this airway maneuver that is head tilt and chin lift so to prevent that we can do either two things we can insert an airway which does not cause any extension of the neck or we can do another airway maneuver called as jaw thrust. So this is the third airway maneuver that is called as jaw thrust. So in this what we are doing is we are keeping the patients uh, here it is extended but normally we don't extend the airway, uh, extend the neck for uh, jaw thrust. So what we are doing is we are putting our index finger behind the, mandible, behind the angle of the mandible and we are just lifting the mandible away from the floor of the mouth, away from the pharynx and uh, this mandible will will pull the tongue and the base of the pharynx along with it so it will open the airway in this we don't need to uh, need to extend the head so that is the thing so jaw thrust so grasp the angle of the lower jaw and lift both hands one on each side moving the jaw forward if the victim's lips are closed open the lower lip with your thumb so here he is opening the lower lip with his thumb so that we provide more uh, um, more space for the air to go in 
so atrial tension lift for a patient with uh, whom you are sure that there is no cervical fracture jaw thrust in a patient where uh, you are doubtful that there may be a cervical fracture again it is given the same thing in the slide so following an rti fall drowning driving in car accidents so you won't know there is a cervical fracture you just do jaw thrust now coming back to the definition of airway so airway is nothing but a device which is inserted either into the oropharynx or nasopharynx and which helps maintaining the patency of the air passage for unobstructed breathing so now can you understand why obstruction happens because of loss of tone and uh, what are the maneuvers so purpose of the airway is to lift the tongue and epiglottis away from the posterior pharyngeal wall and prevent them from obstructing the air passage above the larynx so unlike other maneuvers to maintain the patient airway such as chin lift and jaw thrust tracheal intubation cervical spine movement does not occur when the when the airway is inserted so this is much more safer so uses of airway so it prevents obstruction in the upper ear passage by lifting the tongue we know that so prevents biting and occlusion of the occlusion of the orotracheal tube we'll come by we'll come to that later it protects the tongue during uh, during biting and seizure activity it facilitates the oropharyngeal suctioning it provides a better mass fit for ventilation it uh, helps insertion of the tubular devices into the pharynx and esophagus we will see all these uh, functions uh, later in this ppt now classification of airways so there are uh, we already saw that there are oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal so the airway which you insert through the nose or nasopharyngeal the airway which you insert through the mouth or oropharyngeal and then there are modified airways which are nothing but uh, the oropharyngeal nasopharyngeal that has been modified in a slight way now this is the same picture of the pharynx uh, to make you understand that uh, either you insert it through the nose or through the mouth so oropharyngeal airway so uh, oropharyngeal airway these are all just the theory part explaining the part, parts of uh, oropharyngeal airway so this is a classic oropharyngeal airway this is called as goodell's airway so you just uh, remember the name and this picture i'll i'll put the picture later so there are few parts for this goodell airway so the one is the flange so this rectangular portion which is a plastic portion uh, which is called as flange and uh, this portion is called as body which is curved this surface comes in contact with the tongue and there is a tip which which is placed in the pharynx and the tip has a channel that is an opening through which air can be passed and this the function of this rectangular portion is to keep the uh, airway from slipping into the mouth so if you put the airway inside uh, in an unconscious patient the airway mo- may go inside and it will slip into the pharyngeal cavity we don't want that to happen so we just uh, uh, so this portion which will be kept between two teeth and so that the airway doesn't move inside so this is flange this function of the flange so here there is a red colored part now so i have the same airway here so here here there is a red colored part uh, which is very hard so this part helps in uh, preventing the patient from biting the air uh, biting the airway so the patient cannot bite through this so after intubating the endotracheal tube will be inside then you put the airway inside the patient won't be able to bite the endotracheal tube so they do so that they don't use, lose their airway and uh, this channel is for air passage either for air passage air passage is the most important function we can also do suctioning through through this if there is a lot of secretion in the pharynx or if there is a lot of secretion in the mouth cavity oral cavity then you can do suctioning through this you, you can just put a small suction catheter inside and you can connect it to a suction machine and you can take out the secretions now coming out to size selection so how will you choose there are a lot of size of airway in a airway Uh, in goodell's airway we have adult say adult airway we have pediatric airway so the so this is a pediatric airway this is a smaller one and uh, this is an infant airway it is a newborn uh, infant airway this again is a very small airway so this is these are nasal airways so um, there is nothing but um, in i uh, will come back to nasal airway later so how will you choose the size of a uh, uh, airway so the easiest method is to keep the airway like this so if it is inserted inside the mouth also it will be in the same position so from the angle of the mouth to the uh, angle of the mandible so this is how you uh, choose the size of the airway so for each patient you have to measure normally we use a standard size like uh, for adult uh, we use a 3 size airway and adult female we use a 3 size airway and adult male we use a 4 size airway in uh, nasal also we use the same pattern from the nose to 
angle of the mandible now specific airways so what we saw here so this classic airway is called as goodall's airway and uh, we have some other airway some other special airways like berman's airway patel sirico's endoscopic airway we'll see the pictures so here i want you to concentrate on this slide because uh, in most of the neat pg exams uh, uh, they given a picture of an airway and asked you to identify what it is so that is the so this is the most commonly given picture so this is your classic goodall's airway so you just remember the shape and the flange uh, body bite block channel tip everything you just remember and it is color coded according to the sizes so the smallest size is 000 which is blue uh, i'm sorry it is pink and the highest one is uh, i think it's orange it's not given here and this is a bermans airway the only difference is uh, it is not a closed airway the the channels are open so the advantage here is uh, even if there is a secretion which is blocking the airway in some place uh, these channels will help you breathe so that is one advantage then patel sirico's endoscopic airway it is used to insert the endoscope uh, through this uh, channel and it is made up of metal so these things you just remember the picture remember the name i think that is enough now williams airway intubator ovasapien fiber optic intubator fiber optic intubating airway these are just theory part you can just go through and uh, remember but the picture you have to remember so see here it is an intubating airway from the name itself uh, you can use this airway for intubation because of this curved angulation it is directly in line with trachea so you can put a small bougie inside this airway and you can try to intubate through the uh, airway itself here it is an ovasapien fiber optic intubating airway so here uh, you can insert a fiber optic uh, bronchoscope through this channel fiber optic bronchoscope is nothing but it is an endoscope taking video of the uh, you can you can directly visualize uh, in a computer screen uh, of the of the airway structures the trachea and all those things so this is a fiber optic uh, intubating airway ovasapien fiber optic intubating airway uh, the one thing i want you to remember is all these pictures and names that is very important Oral airway insertion. Place an oral airway in an unconscious patient who has no gag reflex. If possible, use a tongue blade to depress and displace the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. Insert the airway following the curvature of the tongue into the oropharynx. An alternate approach is to insert the airway upside down. As the tip of the airway reaches the posterior wall of the pharynx, rotate the airway 180 degrees into the proper position. Now, how to use the airway? So, the same thing which we saw in the previous slides, it, it is given in theory part. So you have to choose a proper size airway. So too small airway can cause kinking of the tongue and a too large airway can displace the epiglottis posteriorly and traumatize the larynx. So you have to choose the proper size and the insertion techniques, there are two, two different techniques uh, that is flipping 180 degree or using a tongue depressor that is given, uh, given in this theory part. And bite block. So apart from this airway bite block, we have a separate bite block that is, uh, this is what just namesake. What you do is we you take a syringe and you roll it with gas. You, you keep it between the two molars. That is a pre -molar, that is molar one or two or three uh, teeth. So so that the patient cannot bite. So these uh, bite blocks are very useful when it comes to electroconvulsive therapy. So it is given here when it comes to electroconvulsive therapy. So in an unconscious individuals or in a, any unconscious individuals who cannot protect their tongue and lips so what happens in electroconvulsive therapy is the, the the patients are given a short uh, intensity of shocks uh, short span of high, high intensity shocks so this the ect is given in patient with clinical depression with suicidal tendencies so that is the only indication for ect uh, so for that also we need to give anesthesia so we can't just go and shock around people uh, so you have to anesthetize the patient then you have to give the shock so in these patients, what we do is to protect the tongue, we, use, we insert a bite block. So that bite block is nothing but a syringe rolled up with gauze piece and we keep it between the two molars, upper and lower molars, so that the patient won't be able to bite the tongue. So that is the indication. Now coming on to nasopharyngeal airway. So this is a nasopharyngeal airway. So you can see the flange here and this is the body and uh, 
this is the bevel so the bevel is curved slightly to one direction so you just remember these things so when do you use an axillary airway so it can be used when there is a trauma or pathology in the oral cavity or when the surgery is in the oral cavity or in an awake patient who has a protective laryngeal reflex uh, reflexes because nasal cavity even if it is initially it becomes irritable once you once you uh, once you put lignocaine jelly all around this uh, part and you insert it the patient tolerable tolerance for this naso naso pharyngeal airway is much much better and um, if there is any the contraindications are if there is any basal or skull fracture and the, if the patient is on anticoagulation therapy if there is sepsis deformity of the nose or history of nose bleeds you don't insert an axillary airway when you suspect a base of the skull fracture you don't even insert uh, uh, you don't put a uh, nasogastric tube that is rails tube you don't put an axillary airway you don't touch the nose at all because you may directly go into the cranial cavity and cause come the patient to die immediately so you don't uh, do that now these are the various different size of the nasal uh, nasopharyngeal airway so it starts from like endotracheal tube there are a lot of sizes but how do you choose the size of the the diameter of the nasal nasopharyngeal airway is uh, you choose uh, a nasopharyngeal airway which is which is 0.5 to 1 uh size lesser than that of the endotracheal tube so if the patient is intubated with the seven size endotracheal tube you choose a 6.5 size uh, nasopharyngeal airway if the patient is intubated with 8.5 size uh, endotracheal tube you choose an 8 size nasopharyngeal uh, nasopharyngeal airway so it is also given either it is given in the internal diameter of uh, 5.5 to 8 cm 8 8 mm or it is given in french so the maximum is 32 french the minimum is 22 22 french no other airways that are specific airways so we have a cuffed nasopharyngeal airways we have a binasal airway so all these uh, you just remember the picture so cuffed uh, uh, cuffed nasopharyngeal airways you can see the cuff here you can see the pilot balloon here so this is one uh, other special airway so insertion nothing you just choose the appropriate size put uh, nicely lubricate the surface of the airway you just insert see the only one point is important the airway is inserted the bevel Uh, should be against the septum or the bevel should face medially so this is the bevel uh, i think you can see so this curved portion is the bevel so this should face medially so if you are inserting into into the right nostrils it should be like the it, sh it should be facing the medial surface that's it now coming on to the last slide so complications so airway obstruction uh, improper size of airway can cause obstruction trauma obviously tissue edema obviously ulcer and necrosis when there is a traumatic insertion everything can happen central nervous system trauma if there is a base of skull fracture then dental damage sometimes uh, inserting airway can cause uh, dental damage to the teeth which are already damaged and loose laryngospasm and coughing if you have inserted a very large airway it can cause it, it can touch the epiglottis and cause laryngospasm aspiration yeah airway can cause gagging vomiting and the patient go may go in for aspiration equipment failure and latex allergy since uh, the nasopharyngeal airway is made up of latex so this is made up of rubber and uh, we have a latex which is yellow color nasopharyngeal airway that is that is made up of latex which is costly but it is much more better and gastric distension so all these are complications of nasopharyngeal i mean any airways so from this class i want you to remember three things one is most important airway opening maneuvers so that is uh, they have asked in exams also for your life it will be very important very useful whenever whenever you are working in emergency department or in uh, any any emergency or you are attending to any emergencies you should know how to open airway second thing is nasopharyngeal airways name pictures remember the pictures remember the name identify it that's it the third thing is oropharyngeal airway remember the name remember the picture that's it so with this we conclude this class uh, i am pretty sure definitely one question at least one question will be there i hope you answer it